All right, so um, next up is me. Uh, so I'm gonna start with a little video. Thank you. So I'm Amelia Coleman. Um, and this is The Big Reveal. So I do a monthly independent innovation newsletter. It's called The Big Reveal. It's my top 10 coolest things that I have seen that month that I think people need to know about. So it's a completely free service. Welcome to sign up on my website. Um, tomorrow, I believe everybody's going to get a free special edition of the XR Summit. Uh, big reveal. So um, basically, I got to choose what I wanted to talk about. And uh, what I decided I wanted to do was share with you uh, my top 10 coolest things that I have seen this year and why I think that they are going to have an impact on the future of XR. Um, and I think that's what I was going to cover in that slide. So I'm just going to get right to it. Number 10, cyber shoes. So I just came back from CES 2020, which is the largest technology show in the world. It had 180,000 attendees, 4,500 exhibitions, 1,200 of those were startups, and it covered 2.9 million square feet of Las Vegas. Um, and this stood out to me because we have been trying to navigate virtual worlds and the metaverse for a while now. And I am somebody who gets motion sickness. Um, I can't stay in VR too long because I, because my eyes, my ears, whatever. Um, but this actually took that element away from me. So what I like about it is that you sit down, which is great from a public safety point of view. Um, and then you have this um, little mat around you and all you have to do is slip these shoes onto your other shoes that you're already wearing. So you don't need to take any clothes off, put any clothes on, anything awkward like that. And you can walk around, run inside these virtual worlds. And because you're seated in reality, um, you do not get the same kind of sickness that you might get. Um, otherwise. And also in this space, um, we did see companies that were specifically addressing motion sickness within virtual reality. They had bolt-on technologies that you could add to your headsets. Um, another one in this space was the Virtue Sphere, which is a big round ball. It's like a human-sized hamster wheel, and you can play in virtual reality in there. And those are very attractive. At the event, everybody was going over to it, wanted to see what it was like, and wanted to give it a go. Number nine, Ultra Leap. Um, so anybody who knows me knows that I'm a huge fan of this company. I have been following them uh, since 2013. So they used to be Ultra Haptics. They have acquired Leap Motion, which is the gesture interactive technology. And what they do is they produce virtual touch sensation. So this allows you to feel and touch shapes and objects in midair without having to put on any kind of a wearable. So that often can create friction within these kind of um, uh, environments. And when you're showcasing things at events and you're asking people to put things on and off, that can get you know, a bit awkward. So this, all you have to do is put your hand out and you can feel things. And, um, and this is starting to be integrated into automotive as well. So we're going to see this pop up a lot more in our lives as we start to have these more digital experiences in mixed reality, augmented reality, virtual reality. So I showcased this earlier this year, last year, 
at the um, London Tech Week. And, uh, and we did a haunted house experience where you could actually, you know, touch a Ouija board and pick a tarot card and you could feel uh, fire and flames. And because you have that visual element and now you can feel it as well, this just tricks the mind that much more into believing that it's having this virtual experience. So um, they have dev kits out right now. Um, I absolutely recommend them. I think they're amazing. Number eight. Ambisonics. So we touched on this a little bit. Um, so I got interested in sound because uh, I was working in XR and I was finding that I was being let down by the audio experiences. And uh, I had an editor at IBC 365 allow me to start to go out and do research and talk to people about why this was happening and what we could do to kind of merge the two so that you know we weren't being taken out of a really great experience because the sound just wasn't adding up. Um, and so this really led me to deep dive into ambisonic, spatial audio, 360 sound, whatever you want to call it. Um, I did some work with both AR, I've done some work with Magic Beans, um, and I just think that this is definitely moving towards where we're going. And I think that future generations are going to look back and say, I cannot believe you listen to music in 2D when you can listen to it in ambisonics in 3D. So Sony have just introduced three new products, all of them addressing this. As soon as you start to, um, to experience it, everything else sounds flat. So um, this is something that I'm really excited about. Um, being integrated into the XR experiences. Number seven, Hyper CRC. So uh, one of our speakers in our next panel um, is from Unit 9 who produced this with Digital Catapult. And I actually got to try this, and this is one of the coolest things that I got to try this last year. Um, so what it does is it combines the digital with the physical. So the experience I got to do was I got to sit inside an airline chair. And then within virtual reality, I could make real-time decisions about how many people sat in the rows and, um, and what colors I wanted the lights to be and what I wanted the fabrics to feel like. And then as I'm changing my environment inside VR, feeling it in real time, I'm also getting the calculation of how much money I'm spending or how much money I'm saving. And, um, and this can accelerate these processes um, in a, to a huge degree. So being able to use this, incorporate this within design processes, um, I think is going to be a real game changer. So I highly recommend that. Number six. OK, so in, um, oh, that didn't show up. This is called Scape. Um, and I feel like in hindsight, I should have put this one a bit towards more towards the front. Um, this is a very cool technology. And apparently, I'm not the only one who thinks so, because Facebook just bought them for $40 million two days ago. Am I an investor? No, should have been. Um, so why this is so cool is because what it does is it uses geolocation to tag real geographic areas in which we can then um, pin uh, digital to these spaces. So I'm actually going to show you a quick video on this because I think they explain it a lot better in the video than I'm going to do it justice. So here we go.
this idea too about us being able to map our own spaces in real life and then populate it with digital images and visuals and then you know that is something that as somebody walks down the street by my house they're gonna see you know whatever I want to put forward whether that's this beautiful garden or if um, I'm advertising uh, you know something for sale um, these kind of things so um, I am very excited to see where that one goes. At the moment, they've only mapped London, um, so you can actually walk down the streets of Shoreditch if you live in London, and you can actually see um, these experiences. So number five, Eva. So this is eSports Virtual Arena. Um, so why this one made my list is because it's taken two of the biggest growth industries, eSports and virtual reality, and stuck them together. And, um, and so, you know, they are integrating with Twitch um, and other platforms so that they can live stream these virtual reality games. And uh, I got to experience this at Virtuality in Paris. It is very cool. And it is amazing how many people gather around to watch people, um, you know, flail about in headsets. Uh, but the integration of this is very cool. And then when you start to think as well, we're going to be selling real tickets, making real revenue off of these arena experiences, and you can actually charge people different amounts of money for whatever view you give them inside virtual reality. So I am paying more money to have a private box at the front where I can uh, witness what is going on inside the game. Okay, so new look. This is not the clothing brand. I didn't know what to call this one, really. Um, so the biggest trend, one of the biggest trends that I saw in XR at CES was headsets getting smaller, lighter, more compact, and actually, dare I say, almost kind of stylish. Um, so this was by Panasonic, um, you know, who you don't expect to put out a virtual reality headset. But um, they, this is a micro OLED uh, virtual reality headset, and it looks kind of steampunky and kind of cool. It weighs 150 grams. Um, which is very light, and, uh, and they say that they don't actually plan to manufacture these, but just their sheer presence alone really sets a new standard when it comes to what these headsets could look like, could feel like. I can so imagine going to an exhibition and asking someone to put this on and getting a huge number of people saying okay as opposed to sometimes at these exhibitions when you're asking people to put this whole thing on they're not interested um, so also in this space with augmented reality glasses um, there was a huge number so normal glasses um, Nreal um, uh, next wear or something there were a bunch of them basically um, and they are all trying to go smaller sleeker sexier they want to be the first um, consumer glasses that get us away from looking at our mobile phones all the time and actually put the screen in front of your eyes so you are having a heads up eyes open hands free experience and I personally do believe that this is the future I also believe that nobody is going to um, get it right um, and be able to deliver on it like Apple is going to. And I think they're going to change the game in probably about two years' time. I don't, you know, it's been every year they're like, oh, we're going to, are they going to come out with it? Are they going to come out with it? They're not going to come out with it until they got it right, until it's going to be the next iPhone, the next iPad, the next iPod. Um, so these are very sleek beautiful looking glasses, but what's really cool about them is that the phone is the processor. So some of these ones I was fooling around with at CES, the processor and the computer is still in the glasses. So they still weigh a bit, they still look a bit funny. And the truth is, is that I tried about three different kinds and none of them actually worked. Um, you know, and God bless them for trying, you know, and I just got some emails today saying that, the, that they've closed the factories in China where some of them are being made. So I think this is going to delay some of these coming out even longer. Um, but do look out for Apple. These are very interesting. I think that we are going to see more in this area soon. Uh, so this was just like the coolest thing I saw at CES because it really surprised me. So Thermoreal, this is thermo flexible 
wearable material. And what they've done is they've incorporated this into the virtual reality headsets, into um, hand wearables, gloves, <laughs> and, um, and armbands, so you can actually feel temperature inside these virtual worlds. And, um, you know, this, I mean, it did, it really surprised me, and I'm delighted just thinking about it. So, um, you could, I had a snowball fight, and you could actually feel the snow explode across you, and you kind of get that, like, shiver and that, that bite feeling when the ice hits you. Um, also with fireballs, so you can feel that as well. So, all these different ways that we can start to add more senses into the experience, um, I think, are very cool. Okay, Voxin. So this is, um, well, I've been working in this industry since about 2013, and I've worked for several different agencies, and you always get people who call up and they say, oh, I want a hologram. I want it, you know, like uh, Star Wars, like Princess Leia, and you got to kind of break the news to them that that doesn't exist. Well, now it does. This is like the holy grail of holograms, and I think it is... Um, very cool and going to have significant impact in lots of different industries, medical being one of them. So basically what this is, is it is a volumetric holographic unit. So you can actually walk around, you can see it from 360 degrees, you can interact with it, and, um, and you can also, they did the first 5G um, phone call where you can have the Princess Leia, have the conversation, the whole thing. And, um, and I got to do the London debut of this um, last year. And it is a company out of Australia. Um, there currently is not one in Europe. So if you have a showroom, if you want something like this, I know that they're looking for partners over here um, to put units out. But um, I mentioned the medical industry being able to take things like x-rays and make them 3D and volumetric, so you can actually dive into them and dive out of them. Um, so I think that is very exciting. And then number one, here we go, Mojo Lens. So this is kind of as futuristic as it gets. Um, this also debuted at CES this year. This is the very first contact lens that provides the augmented reality experience. Um, so this is something out of sci-fi that we've been reading about forever, and when's it going to happen? Well, here we go. Um, that said, uh, we didn't actually get to try it on. Um, I think, from what I can tell, they're still pretty uncomfortable. Um, they're working with the FDA to be able to get approval on this. Um, so, and then their first um, point of attack is going to be the medical industry before they go to consumer eventually. So um, they're looking at probably five years before they get some kind of approval on this. Um, but it's really fascinating to me that the technology is already there, and they're already able to kind of put the computer inside the something the size of a contact lens. Um, that is a huge advancement, even if they're too uncomfortable to wear at the moment. Um, they will obviously get more comfortable. And so, you know, when we're here in 2030, we might be here with our contact lenses, or at the very least, our augmented reality glasses. And, um, and I think uh, that's going to be very interesting for the future ahead. So like I said, if you're into these kind of new things and um, you're interested in it, welcome to subscribe. They come out once a month. They're free. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you.